Hello guys and welcome back to another locomotive review and today we have a long overdue video uh, There was quite a few coming to the channel and um, they are massively overdue, about a month overdue uh, and we're starting the first, well, the run of reviews with Union of South Africa which I picked up quite a while ago now um, and it has had a little bit of work, so we've put some etched, uh, netched name, uh, number plate on the front. It has had to have a little bit of paint and stuff, so that's why it's a little bit patchy, but it only comes across on camera, you can't really see it in, um, in person. And it is missing that thing. It wasn't, but it's somehow gone mobile. Don't know where. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. So this is a one of 510 limited edition and it is absolutely beautiful um, I picked this up. It was very expensive um, But yeah We're going to run through the detail and give it a run on the layout and enjoy it for a review, so Let's get to it so there is Union of South Africa's box. Now I'm not going to go in it because there's not really much in it. It's the old style packaging as well, which is terrible. Um, but you can see the box. It is part of the A4 Great Gathering Limited Edition National Rail Museum set, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it says Limited Edition of 510. And there is all the stuff you need to know on the back. So there's a bit of history in there. You have also got that there. You can see you can get all of them, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I've just grabbed an A4 thing, it's not the railroad one, it is the uh, railways one because it's a railways local, but I do have two obviously, so I just grabbed whichever, but the instructions are the same regardless, um, so you get that as well. I will grab the etched nameplates and the certificate. So you'll see we have the etched nameplates here, so the red ones I believe are spurs, uh, no are the etched ones and then the black ones are ones we got. And we ordered them in. You do have also got the Great Gathering uh, plate as well, which is pretty cool to see. Um, I'm not going to attach any of these, I don't think it's only the number plate we've had done. Um, but yeah, anyway. And then you get this display case voucher, um, whatever that means. And then you have this. So you can see this is number 78510, so it's quite an early one in the production run and um, that's a certificate of authenticity anyway so it's pretty cool and you get a little bit of history on the locomotive on there as well so we'll run through the detail there quick so we're going to start from the front as you can see that it's nameplate it's not perfect but it's quite a good um quite a good close-up you can see there is obviously good remnants and a little bit of paint where i've had to paint it and stuff but you can't really notice it it just makes it a little bit shinier than it's supposed to be but it looks absolutely fine you do have the pre-painted um, shed code there, you've got the lamp bracket there, you've also got one higher up here near the funnel um, and the separate fitted whistle as well. You've got a double funnel on this locomotive or a double chimney, um, depends on how technical you are. Spung buffers, as you would expect this being a railways locomotive, um, but it's also quite cool to have the little pre-fitted coupling on the front which is really, really nice, uh, probably a realistic one. Um, it also says A4 and Haymarket. Um, no idea. Well, A4 is obviously the class and Haymark is probably what it's based. Um, God knows. Um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This is BR lined green. So you can see you have Union South Africa uh, printed nicely on the side. It's not as defined as the actual nameplate would be. Um, pro in fact, I think the locomotive will probably look better with that um, on. So maybe it's something I do down the line. I don't know. You do have the warning stickers for the electrified lines because this is a reasonably late locomotive uh, late, like obviously it's preserved and it did re uh, run during the electrified line period uh, so that's why it's got those uh, you do also have um, lots of moldy detail underneath so you've got loads of stuff with the uh, cylinders as well this is a non-valanced locomotive because uh, some of it came with valances like Mallard, this one does not uh, so you can see all the valve gear and coupling rods which looks fantastic uh, you do have the banding on the boiler as well, which is painted really precisely and really, really nicely. Um, makes the green stand out as well, uh, especially with that band, it looks fantastic. Uh, it's a lot of people's favourite livery as well on this locomotive. So as the back, you've got loads of moldy detail for the rear uh, pony truck, whatever you want to call it, with the rear two wheels basically, um, with the axle boxes for that. Uh, it fits out nicely. Uh, it doesn't pivot, it's one of the locos that has the 
non-pivoting one which is better for detail but obviously slightly less accurate so if you are obsessed with accuracy then you're not going to be happy with that more electrified uh, line warnings as well you've also got some lining around the windows which are glazed and look fantastic uh, including on the side as well you've got 6009 which is the running number printed nicely on the side and RA9 which is the route availability also printed on the side of the cab very very precisely as well you also have a little crest as well which is really nice it actually looks quite good um, it's printed really very precisely I don't know if you can um, zoom in on what that says but, um, that's pretty cool, isn't it? It's pretty cool to see that. So, um, it's been very, very nice. So, yeah, that's the uh, inside of the. Uh, we'll get inside of the cab. See, it is printed nicely. Uh, well, painted and picked out nicely in there. Um, you know, you have the gauges as well, so it is quite a well detailed cab. Tender detail, lots inside there as well. Obviously, this is a corridor tender, so you do have the little door here which the crew would have gone down on non-stop runs and then you'll see they walk into here and then out the back here into the coaches which is pretty cool you have the water tank there you have a coal load which i believe by the sound of it is removable but i'm not going to obviously remove it um, and then you have uh, all the under frame detail for the tender i'll pick that really nicely this obviously is an eight wheel tender which is quite a unusual feature uh, most locos have uh, six wheel tenders. There are the odd ones that do have eight wheel tenders, but this one um, is one of the one one of the tenders that has eight wheels on it. Um, up around the back, you also have sprung buffers on the tender, which is really nice, really nice to see. But obviously, they're actually quite. They're not really really springy, so they're um, reasonably accurate, and also take a bit of bit of pushing in. Um, and then obviously you've got the corridor tender. At the back, uh, the corridor for the tender, and you've also got a glazed window, which is actually the right way around, unlike on some A4s where it's the glazing's in backwards. Uh, so that's nice to see, and also some more electrified line sticker uh, stickers. Right across the top, you have the uh, the funnel at the front, or the chimney, double chimney at the front, which looks fantastic. You do have the uh, you do have obviously a barley seam across the top, but it's made to look really reasonably realistic with all this riveting and obviously where a dome would be on a loco without streamlining fits out nicely as well. You do have the safety valves picked out, which are I believe metal and they're um, separately fitted as well. You can see there's a gap around them, which is pretty cool. You have the moving vents on the top, which is a nice little feature. They they do move. You've got that one there, which is pretty cool. I like that, it's a pretty cool feature. Um, and then across the side, the only difference is on this side, you've got a little crest on this side. It is accurate to have it on one side and not the other. Um, I don't know why, but the locom is like that. So that is Union South Africa then, that is the detail. We'll now head over to the layout and get it running. So there is Union of South Africa looking splendid on the layout. Uh, we'll go quickly do some slow speed. And uh, see what it's like. Uh, these are usually not the best for slow speed, these A4s, but they do run really well at high speeds. But we'll see what this one is like. So, yeah, obviously it jumps in. And that's about as slow as we're going to get it before it starts to cog. It's not too bad. It is cogging there. But yeah, you can see at any normal speed, it's lovely and smooth, which is really, really good. Uh, which is marvellous. Lovely. Right, so. Let's enjoy you in South Africa going around for a little bit. And we'll get some nice shots. Let's go. Half speed, express speed for an A4. Well, we we'll get a little bit faster because it's an A4, isn't it? So... Look fantastic going around. You might notice, I don't know if it was like this in the previous video, but we're down to two lines now. There's some new coaches as well, there's lots of stuff happening uh, on the layout in the coming weeks and months, so we'll see if you're looking forward to that. Subscribe to the channel. Um, we have been silent, but there's lots happening, so behind the scenes to the railway very soon. And it doesn't look too bad from a distance as well with that uh, uh, with that number plate, so that's a good thing. Um, 
It looks fantastic. So great to have Unisaf of a Chrome layout and have it in the collection. So you can see it doesn't look too bad at all. What's, what's catching? Stop clicking things. Pretty cool, isn't it? There you go. Fly across, and there we go. Looks great with those coaches as well. <laughs> My third A4 of many. So, I normally don't like putting extra name plates and stuff on, but I had to with the number plate because. For some reason it came without one, but I don't want to send the logo back because it's super rare. But um, it's not, it was a relatively minor thing, uh, minor thing, so might as well keep it and just alter it. I mean, unfortunately, it has a slightly shiny smoke box because of the uh, paint and stuff we had to apply to it. Um, but apart from that, not too bad. Um, and it looks alright from any sort of distance. I absolutely love the loco. It's not like it's on any worse than the uh, standard A4, like the experimental purple one, because that's pre-fitted and the Hornby didn't do a very good job of pre-fitting it. So. Because Hornby are Hornby, not fitting things very well. And it comes back around again. It does look absolutely stunning, don't it? Is it? These A4s. Oh, it's Give it one more lap and that'll do. This layout looks terrible with this grass, doesn't it? Bang, there we go. So that is Union of South Africa then. I uh, hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the locomotive in the uh, comments below. And I'll see you very soon for some more uh, locomotive reviews. Goodbye.